Now, I'm very pleased to welcome today Deirdre Safers and Ricardo Morales as our presenters. Deirdre is a teacher trainer who's been involved in teaching and teacher development for the last 14 years and has taught English in seven countries over the course of her career. She has an MA in online and distance education and has used blended learning with both students and teachers. She now works with teachers and institutions to help them get the best out of teaching and learning online. And Ricardo also is extremely experienced and will be kicking off today's presentation. Over to you, Ricardo. Thank you very much. Um, how are you? Uh, I hope you're doing well. Uh, we're going to have a uh, welcome to our session. We're going to have a session on making the most of online workbooks. And the first thing I would ask you to help me with is to typing in the chat box if you are users of face-to-face -face print workbooks. So you just need to chat to type yes if you are users of face-to-face uh, -face workbooks so we can have an idea of uh, who would be attending the session today. Thank you very much. Okay, so only yes, please, in case you are a, a user. Good. So as uh, the title of our session is uh, how we're going to be making the most of our online workbooks. And uh, this is, oh, hang on a second, okay. So how are online workbooks traditionally used? And uh, there are many different ways in which we can use uh, online workbooks. They can be used as additional classwork. Sometimes we want, as teachers, we want to add some uh, work to our students and we set up for additional classwork. We also use that as outside class activities. So when we want to assign some specific tasks to our students, besides the uh, regular or traditional classwork uh, activities we have on a daily basis. For homework, uh, that's a very uh, traditional use of uh, the online workbooks. This is regarding the amount of tasks teachers think there that are necessary for users after their sessions. Reviews, when teachers want to uh, make a review on some specific aspects and topics uh, that are pertinent to the uh, course, well, as a review, they are very uh, useful as well. Mechanical drills, uh, we use them to identify some specific type of exercises and activities our students need to carry out. Mechanical drills help us uh, uh, work on the form of a structure and in the repetition of such a uh, form so students can uh, master or can be more confident using certain type of structures. What else, what other uses do we have for um, the online workbooks? We can have uh, some type of activities that are teacher oriented, others are more technology oriented. Could you please see in the chat box, we have a series of items here. Could you please in the chat box quickly try to identify which of those aspects or, or elements are more teacher or teaching oriented and which ones are more uh, technology. So try to just identify the ones that are teaching oriented and type them in in the chat box so we can have an idea of which ones you consider are more related to teaching. Okay. We have progress tracking, good. Okay, uh, we have communication as well, consolidation, and so forth. All right, great. Um, the ones that are specifically related it doesn't mean that the rest are not related to teaching. All of them, of course, are involved and have something to do with teaching. But the ones that uh, are more common teaching oriented and will serve a function that will allow us to identify 
our teaching methodology, to plan our classes, to consolidate students' uh, knowledge and ability to communicate are the ones that appear to the left. As I said, it doesn't mean that the rest are not related to teaching in any manner, but of course, the ones that have a strong, solid uh, element uh, uh, related to teaching are the ones that appear to the left. And we're going to talk a little bit about many of those in this session. But first of all, let's take a look at teachers' needs. What do teachers usually look in, in their classes? Well, they want to know what the students are doing, how well they are doing it, and if I, I or if teachers can help them improve. That's one of the, the aspects teachers always look whenever they are uh, uh, identifying their own needs. What other needs they have? Well, they want to know if uh, an online workbook helps them see how much they have improved over the semester. Traditionally, we tend to think that uh, there's not always enough information or we cannot have access to accurate information until there's a midterm exam or until the end of the term. And sometimes it is a little bit too late to have any type of uh, solution to certain problems that we identify in our students. So we want to see how much they have improved over a period of time. Teachers also want to know how will the online workbook affect what is being done in class. Um, as we, in the first slide, uh, identify, or the second slide identify, teachers tend to uh, assign certain tasks uh, as part of the homework, but we don't always, as teachers, consider the effects or the implications the use of those uh, online workbooks have in our classes. We also want to know how will the online workbook help me support students of different levels in the same class? And I think all of you who have taught English or are English teachers have had this problem at least once, I would say more than once, in which we have students with different needs that are at different levels uh, within the same class. And sometimes it, it is hard or you struggle a little bit to find that the adequate balance within the class. And we're going to see how online workbooks will help us with that. Is there an effect on relationships? How students interact among themselves or with the teacher? How students uh, uh, work in different tasks and have certain type of collaboration? And how does that affect the type of relationships in build? Can I also use the online workbook to develop writing skills? Well, yes, I would say yes, and we are going to talk a little bit about certain advantages. For those of you who are familiar to the use of online workbooks in general, what would you say uh, are the advantages of such online workbooks? Um, why don't you type in some ideas of certain advantages in the use of online workbooks, and then we can start discussing a little bit about those advantages. Flexibility, thank you, Isabel. OK, absolutely. Self-study, independent learning, immediate feedback, more communication, great. Saves time, it's motivational. Well, thank you very much. Absolutely. Time, time management, uh, certain activities can be uh, uh, assigned to the online workbook in such a way that we don't consume time from the face-to-face -face class. And specifically, when we address certain drills, certain sometimes mechanical activities, but not always mechanical activities, that are not necessarily pertinent for the classroom, because that's going to say that's going to uh, take time or consume some time from uh, our possibilities to establish different types of communication. Time is a, an important aspect. Focus, to be very clear on what specific needs students have and to be able to concentrate in those specific aspects we want our students to, uh, to look into. Personalization, it has to do with the type of activities that are 
in built in an online workbook and how we're going to assign perhaps certain activities to, to some students uh, or what level of uh, uh, personal communication students can have in terms of talking about talk about their likes, their dislikes, their personal affections or some uh, other aspects that will help us address students and their needs. Lesson planning. This is one of the most important elements uh, in the use of online workbooks. And the reason is that uh, if we have information about students' outcome, if we know how students are performing, chances are that uh, our lesson planning would be affected by such information. So in lesson planning, the use of an online workbook is key. A review. We mentioned this before. Uh, when we review, when we want to uh, make sure that students have already gone through all the aspects they should be learning at a certain point, well, online workbooks are definitely a very good help for this. Teacher development. And that's a very interesting aspect because we as teachers don't always have uh, amount the, the necessary amount of information or data that would help us identify tendencies in our practicum, how we are doing to verify if the outcome of, of our students is being affected by our teaching approach. And there are certain elements in our uh, in online workbooks that will help us identify those aspects. What do we have here? We have data. Some of you may say, well, these are scores. And uh, well, one of the important elements uh, here is the progress. This is a way to identify progress from our students. Here we can see in the, in the slide that we have the average course score and we have some other components. This data indicates the strong areas from our group, if we're analyzing the data from the group uh, perspective, we're gonna talk about uh, individual scores later on. Uh, we can also see, uh, we, we can also see if some students need more help with certain specific aspects they, uh, they have been covering. We can see, for example, in this example, in this case, sorry, that the average course score is 83. It might be good or bad, depending on the school parameters and your criteria. But what we can identify that one of the components, and I hope you can see that clearly on screen, one of the uh, uh, topics or structures that is being covered, uh, well, we can identify that the group is doing consistently below the media. So this is an indicator, and that's what we get from online uh, workbooks, uh, performance indicators. They would tell us with numbers, with objective data, how well our students are doing or in what uh, other areas they would need some uh, additional support from students. And uh, in the previous slide, we saw uh, group scores. We have here now uh, other type of scores. These are individual scores. What are they useful for? Well, we can see, for example, that if the average for this course by members is, let's say, 83%, which the green light indicates that it's, it's a good number according to the criteria used for this class specifically. And we see that this student his uh, overall score is 83. That means that he's in the media. That, that means that we should not worry too much about this student. That means that perhaps he needs a little bit more uh, support in some areas, but all in all, he's doing a good job and we should not be too worried about uh, his performance. However, we can see, for example, that um, he might need some help on, or some support in some other areas. So individual scores will help us identify what are the needs for very specific students, what 
those uh, needs are and uh, how we can tackle them down. And this is where lesson planning uh, comes as well. Just uh, to synthesize the, this, this part of the presentation before I hand it over to my colleague, uh, Deidre, who will continue with the second part of the presentation. We can say that individual scores uh, keep a record of work and capabilities. They also provide, as some of you mentioned in the chat box, they also provide immediate feedback. That means that both teachers and students are always aware of the level of performance they have. They always know uh, where they are, what they are doing right, what's, what's uh, positive about uh, their work, and the areas in which they would need more help and support from teachers. This would definitely mean that a teacher can have a, a better way to plan uh, their classes with uh, the specific information that uh, he or she has collected. And uh, another advantage of this is that information is available every day all the time. You don't have to wait until they take the, the uh, I don't know, the midterm exam or the weekly quiz. You have this uh, information or data available all the time and anyone can consult this. I mean, anyone, the student or uh, the teacher. So at this point, I will hand it over to my colleague, uh, Deidre, who would continue talking about uh, lesson planning and some other aspects of uh, teaching with online workbooks. Over to you, Deidre. Thanks, Ricardo. Hi, everyone. Can you all hear me okay? Great. Okay, so um, as Ricardo has, uh, has mentioned, this information, this data is something that can enable the teacher to plan what their action is with the, with the students, with their classes, and as, as a professional for themselves. So we're going to look at one way in that this information can affect what the teacher does coming up. Okay, so if we have a look at this, we've got data in the multi-ability class. We have two students, it's nice and small. Uh, we've got David Mitchell and Gregory House. In the chat box, can you tell me if there is a problem with my class? And if there is, then what's the problem? Exactly, Anita. The students are on totally different levels. Okay, so it may not be that they're uh, different levels. They may well be different levels, but they're entirely different abilities. So as the course has progressed, the difference between them has become greater. So what we want to do is use the online workbook to close the gap a little bit, to provide challenge for one and uh, support for the other one. Okay, so David is really struggling. Now, if you were in a face-to-face -face class, what would you do with these two students? I'll just put a couple of answers in the chat box. Any ideas? Put them together, yeah. Which can be very effective. You don't want to do it all the time because they might get a bit more, uh, get a bit frustrated with each other. Um, but they can definitely, you can get Gregory to help David and um, and then you can move on to do other things. Okay, so provide help and more practice. We're really just looking at David here. Let one help another, brilliant. Okay, so David clearly needs a lot of help. What does Gregory need? Does Gregory need extra practice? More challenge is what he needs. Yeah, so if he's already operating at 92% all the time, quite likely he finds it really easy. He, he doesn't do it, uh, it doesn't take him very long to do. He's gonna need something that allows him to explore his abilities a bit more and to get more out of his time in the classroom and outside of the classroom. Alexandra, I like where you're going with that. 
So we're going to move on to the next section. Okay, so imagine this is your class. You have eight students and you have four students who are very happy. They're in the right level, but they might need a little bit more challenge in use. You have two students who are struggling with forms and very basic stuff from vocabulary and grammar. They're finding it difficult. And we have two students who've mastered form and use, but they still make some mistakes in speaking. So how might our online workbook help us here? Any ideas in the chat box? So we mentioned extra practice earlier on. Okay, right. When you say give them rules, who are you talking about? And we're talking about using the online workbook. Okay, Eva, lovely. So different tasks allowing different times to do the tasks. Okay, so we don't want to give everybody everything in the workbooks. In most online workbooks, there is a lot of material for you to do and there's not necessarily enough time for all the students to do all the activities anyway. So to use their time the best, the teacher needs to know which activities are best for those who are struggling with basic grammar and vocabulary and which activities would be more challenging for the people who need to expand a little bit more, maybe be a bit more creative. You also have use of the forums and blogs or whatever communicative tools your workbook happens to provide you with that will allow the interaction to be that challenge and extension. So with the very happy students, we might sometimes have some consolidation and sometimes we'll have some extension. With the struggling with form, very simple, we just give them extra practice of the basics. And with the mastered form and use, this is when we want to get them to do some communicative work, which could be face-to-face -face and it could also be online. So the main idea with this really is that multi-ability classes can be very easily catered to with online workbooks. So they practice different things for different people. There are different types of activities. So we talked before about consolidation and extension. So the consolidation goes over what they've done before and gives them a chance to up to, to practice that in a different way. So maybe they practice it in class in one kind of scenario and then they go home and they do a different type of exercise that might just approach their brain in a slightly different way and makes it more accessible so that they can actually digest the information and it's more accessible to them. On the other side of that we've got the extension either with more challenging activities or using the communication tools and we'll look at those in a moment. So for our students who were struggling we've got more consolidation. For the guys who are happy, they go in the middle, sometimes they'll get consolidation, sometimes they'll get extension. And for the ones who have mastered form and use, we want them to be working on the extension. So the idea is that the teachers assign appropriate activities according to what the students need. Now you will have quite a complex picture of what your class needs and the information that you get from the online workbooks via the data that we talked about. This will give you even more information to be able to assign the appropriate activities. And I know we said earlier on that online workbooks save time. They do save time. They save time in terms of marking. They save time in the classroom so you're not looking at the same basic exercises all the time. But that time is balanced out by time you may need to spend looking at this information and analyzing what it means. So it's not that you're going to spend forever doing this, but you need to develop a pattern that makes sense for you and that makes sense for your group. So in order to assign appropriate activities, you need to know the content of your workbook very well and you need to know your students very well. Now I wouldn't suggest that you every single morning check the data in the progress reports and every single morning look at the content in the online workbook to find one activity for Gregory and one activity for David. <laughs> I forgot his name there. Um, so th this, it's not a practical thing for teachers to be able to do. What might be more sensible is that, for example, on a Wednesday afternoon, 
you take a look at the reports and the progress over the previous week. You take a look at the upcoming content that matches what you're doing with the what you're going to be doing with the student's book for the week, and you decide which of these activities would be consolidation, which of these activities would be extension, and what activity would I like to create in the forums, for example, that would allow my my third group of students to explore and extend a little bit more. So rather than having having to prepare something for each individual in the class, you provide them with an individualized experience by looking at the general type that they fall into. And depending on your students, you won't need to tell them you need to do exercise 1B and 3C, and you won't need to do that. But once you have trained your learners to understand themselves, and that's another job and another webinar altogether, then you will be able to say, okay, if you're struggling with this type of problem, then these activities are the right ones for you. If you want to do a bit more work on this type of language, then these activities are the thing for you. So it's a question of knowing your students, knowing your content, and thinking about it deeply in a way that is meaningful and that will allow for everybody to do the thing that serves their true needs. And if you get to a point where you've got students who are still struggling with a certain exercise type, it doesn't necessarily mean that they need more consolidation, but as Ricardo mentioned earlier on, it may mean that you need to provide a different approach to the one that you would habitually use. So for example, if you look at the data and you realize, oh wow, everyone has uh, done really badly on the present perfect. Okay, so your choices are you can either give them more present perfect practice to do online, which they haven't done particularly well so far, so it might not be the best approach. Or you can present the language again, which maybe you did yesterday, so maybe again, possibly not the right approach. Or you can create an activity, a communicative activity that relies on the students being able to use the present perfect. So you've got a context, you've got reasons to use the language, and then out of that, you can provide feedback on that activity in a more realistic setting, which might be a bit more accessible for the students. So there, and obviously there are different activities, different types of activities, different ways of interacting within the class, or within the forums, etc., on the on the online workbook itself. So it's up to you to think about which way have I not tried yet. So this group of students is still struggling. I haven't tried all the different ways that I know, and maybe I'll try a different one. Or I've tried all the ways that I know, and then you know you need to go and research a, a, an alternative. So it can it can bring in all of these different aspects that Ricardo was mentioning earlier and that, uh, that we'll need to kind of look at going forward as well. So always try and keep an open mind as to how you can approach the things that you find out about by using the data in the online workbooks. Okay, so when we're looking at extension, we're really talking about skills development. So traditionally, as Ricardo mentioned in the beginning, the online workbook was generally used for homework, a bit of extra practice, you know, and it was very separate from the, the classroom. But it's not really what we have, it's not all that we have, because now we have forums, we have comments, we have uh, different ways to network within the, uh, the online workbook itself. There are different ways uh, that, that these tools can be used. So we can look at communication skills and we can also look at writing skills. So if we're thinking about the forums, for example, is the most obvious one. So in communication, we can ask the students to discuss some more. Um, obviously, this is a slight repetition of what happens in class. So in a classroom situation, maybe you ask them to debate the advantages of modern architecture over the advantages of historic architecture, um, which is one thing, and you have a time limit of 10, 15 minutes. It doesn't get very far. Maybe the shy students don't get an opportunity to speak, um, but everybody gets to talk. 
you get to listen in and find out what their common mistakes are, etc. If you wanted to extend that and ask the students to go away and read an article about it and come back and discuss in more detail and discuss in a more organised fashion, then the forums are the ideal place for you to do that. So training them also to talk about the topic in a discursive fashion and not in a, here's my opinion this is the end. We want to talk about, okay, well, this is what I found out and I find this really interesting. What do you think? So it's it's working more on communicative skills. Um, but that's a certain type of learner training, again, that you need to undertake to make sure that when you assign a particular task to improve communication skills, that they're concentrating on the skills involved in communication. The forum, again, can also be used for writing skills. So instead of focusing on the what do you think, and that's an interesting point, and that type of language, you're going to look instead at the construction of a paragraph, for example. So you need a topic sentence, you need a sentence of explanation, you need further information and an example, and maybe some sort of concluding sentence. So all of these things are the composition of a good paragraph. So when they go off and read their article and they come back and they construct their paragraph that says their opinion, what they're looking at is writing skills, not communication skills. It may well be that those original paragraphs will invite the opinion of others in the group, but if you're clear about the learning objectives for your activity, whether it's communication or writing, then you should be looking at and correcting, and I use correcting loosely, the things that are important for your learning objectives. So in, if you're looking at communication, you're looking at, are they asking a question at the end? If you're looking at writing, you're looking at whether or not they have a topic sentence. So the way that you evaluate what the students produce is different depending on whether you want to develop communication or develop writing. And there are various other tools within the online workbooks that allow writing skills to, to be um, developed as well, such as the reading and writing portfolio section that we have in some workbooks um, and different uh, comment sections, the fact that there are various ways of uh, writing in so that your teacher can see later on. So it's all encompassed and it depends very much on what you want to use it for, how will you define your task and how will you ask the students to complete it. So it's something that definitely bears thinking about before you embark on using these things. As if, for example, you have you have forums, okay, you know, so we want to discuss things. Use the forums. Using the forum is like using a classroom. So you would never say, I want to develop speaking skills. Well, use a classroom. It's not the most useful uh, piece of advice that you could give a new teacher. So what you need to do is advise them to create a task that will allow the students to speak to each other, that will allow the students to communicate. So it's all task related. So in most workbooks, you won't have these tasks predefined, but the fact that the tools are there allows you the option to create those tasks to back up the work that they're already doing in the um, automated exercises and activities already. So it gives you that little bit of creativity as a teacher as well. Okay, so if we go back to our original questions, so we're going to look at these questions basically in terms of what the online workbooks can tell us. So can the workbooks tell us what my students are doing, how well they're doing it, and how I can help or make them do it better? Yes, it does. So we have the data, we have the individual reports, what are they doing it, what are they doing, we have their scores as to how well they've done it, and how can I make or help them do it better? It can give you pointers and it can maybe indicate if some people are struggling or if they're being lazy, if they need a particular kind of encouragement or support. So it, it gives you the options that you might not always get from a face-to-face -face interaction. Will it help me see how much they've improved over the semester? Yes, it will, because we have their various pieces of writing that come up either in writing tools, in portfolio, in forums, in communications privately with you. And we also have the scores that we can see for the duration of the course. So you can always look back over time and see how well they've done. 
how will the online workbook affect what we do in class? Well, as we saw, we have um, we have the data that will tell us how the students have done, what they need to do. So that information will will tell you what areas you need to focus on when you come back into the classroom. So as I said, not every single day, but when you come to doing your, for example, weekly review, it will tell you what you need to focus on a little bit more and what work needs, not needs to be ignored, but can be left because they're doing it very well already. How will the online workbook help me support students of different levels in the same class? We looked at the mixed ability and the fact that we've got consolidation, we've got extension, we have different ways of approaching both those types of students. Is there effect on relationships? Well, that depends on how you use the communication tools. Are you going to get them to do projects together? Are you going to get them to work together in any way? And if so, it will mean that the students spend a bit more time together and a bit more time in each other's company and with each other's ideas that should hopefully um, have a positive effect on relationships between the students and the transparency of that to the teacher and the teacher's ability to comment intermittently will mean that there is a better relationship with the teacher as well, I hope. Can I also use online workbooks to develop writing skills? Yes, some online workbooks, such as face-to-face, -face, have inbuilt writing skills uh, work. And other online workbooks, as well as face-to-face, -face, also have the forums, the networking, the private messaging. So that all of those things can be used to develop writing skills. So to quickly summarize, how online workbooks can help teachers. We have five different sections. So the data is a huge one. You get data from uh, from gradebook, from the progress reports. You get it in real time. So right now, how is it going? Which means that it's formative, i.e. it can inform how you're going to teach them and the work that they need to do. And it can also be summative in terms of what do you get at the end of the term that you can uh, use to write your certificates, for example? How have they done overall? The data itself can inform your planning. What do they really need to do and how do they need to do it? And this is where your teacher development element comes into it as well in terms of in, in the how do they need to do it. So maybe you have more ideas, maybe you're stuck for ideas and you need to talk to someone else. This is potentially your opportunity to do a bit of action research with some new methodology or some new teaching um, teaching tips and activities. Differentiation is essentially working with mixed ability. So you're making the difference between students who are struggling and students who are doing really well. So it provides you with the information to do it and it also provides you opportunities and activities to use to consolidate to extend, it provides feedback, and it allows for independence for students who are ready for it, or independence for students who are trained. Additionally, there is interaction. So in the communication tools, we can design collaborative tasks, and we can attempt to build communities or extend the community of the class beyond the classroom so that they're working together in a friendly and collaborative way. And the last one, of course, is the writing schools writing skills. Of course, the communication tools are the ones that allow for further writing skills to be done communicatively and collaboratively, and the writing tools for individual work, for example, with the reading and writing portfolio and individual writing tool within individual online workbooks. So face-to-face, -face, the one that we're um, kind of using as an example today, is uh, it does cover basically all of these bases. Okay, so that's uh, that's that's workbooks in a nutshell. I'm sure Alistair is going to uh, pass on a number of questions uh, <laughs> to myself and Ricardo. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Deirdre. Thanks, Ricardo. So, um, yes, we've got a few questions coming in, so I'll make sure to to ask those. And please, if you've got a question you haven't already asked, please type it into the chat. So, first of all, we've got a question from Georgina Zarate, who asks, um, what advice do you have about motivating students actually to use the forums? Is that anybody in particular? Um, would you like to start with that, uh, Deirdre? 
Okay. Well, the um, the the forums require a little bit of input from the teacher. So if we imagine again making the parallel with the face-to-face -face class, we imagine that we want our students to discuss. Um, let's stick with the uh, example of architecture. So we want them to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of something. We're not going to stand at the front and say, discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this. It's not going to result in any discussion at all. So first of all, we'll need to give them some input. Either we'll look at um, the an article or a video or something so that they'll get some ideas, basically. Then you give them specific instructions. So one set in the class is for the idea and one set is against and together they prepare their ideas and then they come together and after that the idea is that one of them has to convince the other. They need to win the argument, for example. You will give them a time limit so you'll never let them just kind of talk on for uh, for the duration of the class, they will have a time limit by which they will need to reach a conclusion. So there is a pressure of time. When we come to doing a, a discussion in the forum, the activity needs to have the same elements as you would have for that activity in class. So it's not just a question of saying, discuss your favorite films. It's a very boring question. The, the question itself needs to be interesting and engaging. And then you want another, uh, you, need, you need the tasks to be well constructed and you need your instructions to be very clear. I would also make sure that you have an interesting article or video or something to be the inspiration at the beginning. So there's always a notion of you know, the lazy students who never bother, but if there is a very interesting task, you'll get some of those across. The rest, you need to add the forum activities into your assessment in some way. Um, so there's the assessment side, but also there's the making it appealing side. So there's two different, uh, two different elements to it. And if you bring both into play, hopefully you'll get uh, the majority of your students on board. Okay, thanks. Uh, Ricardo, is there anything you would like to add to that? Well, just to add a little bit into what uh, Dietra very well explained is that we should not be afraid of using forums uh, as, as teachers, even with very basic level, uh, levels. Uh, it's, it's very interesting how we can engage students in participating in forums, as well, uh, provided that we have a very well structured action plan for them. Um, and do not also expect that students are going to immediately get very highly engaged. We as teachers need a constant supervision and being very, looking after what they do and looking into the type of uh, answers and contributions and always be there to support, provide feedback when necessary, and they require our constant participation and monitoring. So basically, uh, just uh, completing uh, what Dietra mentioned, yes, our teacher role in forums is very, um, it's very thorough in terms of looking at every move students make and be there to provide the necessary support. Okay, thanks very much. Got a question now um, on collaborative tasks from Isabel Gonzalez. Bueno, who asks um, if you've got some examples of collaborative tasks that can be used in this environment. Hmm. Well, the, um, the architecture discussion would be uh, obviously not with that exact same topic. That's one of my favorites. Um, you can also ask the students to create their paragraph, for example, they can create that together. So one of the things that you could do is, and this is actually, it's easier to do on a wiki, um, but you can do this iteratively in a forum as well. Um, so if you give them a very basic paragraph, um, such as, uh, I like new buildings, they are good looking, uh, <laughs> which is not a fantastic uh, example. Um, so they, that's the start of the paragraph. And then you invite the students to add in 
details to add in an interesting example, to add in some extra explanation. So you can get them to do this in pairs, for example, and as a teacher you can set up a forum, especially for a group, so you could you know, do, do forum A for, uh, I don't know, Bob, John, Mary and Joanna, and they're going to work together on this, this uh, paragraph, and as they work through adding details, deleting things that other people have said, they will come to what is hopefully a pretty good paragraph because they can correct each other, they can work on those different things. Ricardo, do you have any uh, favorites? Well, uh, basically, uh, I, I would say that the type of collaboration that you assign to very specific groups, I really like that mm -hmm. idea you just expressed. The, um, try not to uh, use one forum to have all your group in certain collaborative tasks, but uh, instead open up different forums where students are going to be having different uh, levels of performance and participation. At some forums, they would go there and read what others posted, and then perhaps from there build in a new forum with the certain information that they have received or they have read in the other forum. So I would say that yes, uh, uh, forums are, are are a good tool to have that sort of collaboration. And again, I, I, I may sound too repetitive, but the teacher's role here is very, very um, important as to give accurate and consistent follow-up. Mm -hmm. And uh, one other thing that kind of comes out of what you said there, Ricardo, is the smaller groups for collaborative stuff tend to work better on finite tasks. So if you're asking them to do a particular thing within a particular time window, which is what I've generally found to, to work better. Um, the, if you can have a group of between four and six, any less than four and there isn't enough inspiration within the group to, to get it going and any more than six means that somebody might dominate and the others don't necessarily get a chance to, right. to say very much. Um, so kind of four to six is, is an excellent number. If you have a bit more, it's fine. If you have a bit fewer, it's fine. But you have to do a lot more encouraging if there are fewer of them. Um, but yeah, that would be. Okay, thanks. Got a question now, quite specifically about face-to-face -face and the differences between online workbooks for face-to-face -face and English Unlimited. Um, I don't know, Peter. Would you have any? Um, any thoughts on that? The, the differences between face-to-face -face and in terms of books. functionality, um, both work, online workbooks are built in the same system. Um, so people using both online workbooks are very familiar with the functionality across both products. The difference comes from the fact there are two different courses, and that will be reflected in the materials, and the tasks, etc. But the task types, the functionality, everything else will be the same. Okay. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So the, the portfolio, as Deirdre just said, but I hadn't turned the microphone on, um, is only in face-to-face. -face. Thanks. Okay, I've got a question now on, uh, sorry, question now on how do you know what students need to practice in classes? You're following on from the online workbooks. Um, how, do you, how do you take that from the online workbooks, that information, into the classes? Ricardo, I'll let you start first this time. Yes. Um, sorry, can you repeat that, uh, the, the uh, very last yes. part of the question? Yes. Um, how, as a teacher, how do I know what students need to practice in classes? So I think following on from their work on the online workbooks. Okay, books. thank you. Yes, um, uh, data, uh, performance indicators are one of the uh, first elements that we should consider. If our students are consistently below uh, level in terms of uh, one specific structure that has been uh, uh, reproduced or produced in the online workbook after a certain activities, you see that that data would help you identify exactly where your students are struggling more and what actions you should take. 
as Deidre mentioned in the presentation, maybe if you were presenting a present perfect, your students were practicing present perfect uh, with, the, with the online workbooks, and then at some point you notice that they didn't do quite as expected, you may have to take different uh, roads there. One of them is to maybe assign uh, more practice, which is not necessarily the most uh, 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 useful practice there. Maybe you need to, re to present the structure again with a different approach. So this is one example of how the online workbook information gathered there in the, in the platform would affect the way you would be uh, planning or what happens inside the classroom in a face-to-face -face scenario. Uh, Didra, I don't know if you want to add. Yeah, I mean, I think the, all that information comes from the data in the, in the progress reports and then you need to interpret it in the way that's most appropriate. So is it, is it uh, an access issue? Is it a lack of understanding? Is it a change of task type? Is it that they need to look at it in a more communicative way? You know, that's up to you to decide knowing your students, but the original information will come from the progress reports and the data that's there. Any more questions? Okay, thanks. Um, yep, got a, a few more questions. So um, from uh, Juan Carlos asking, uh, is it going to be possible to upload video and audio into the forums? Mm. I don't think so. Ricardo, do you know? Uh, I know uh, that you can embed video in the forums for, uh, for example, for English Unlimited and Audi as well. You can always post the link to uh, external uh, video and Audi sources. We don't currently have that option for Touchstone, but we, we do have that for L2, I think. Okay, so for face-to-face -face it should work, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, um, just one final question now um, from Giovanna Morero, who asks if we have English online books with uh, naval vocabulary, um, because uh, Giovanna works with midshipmen in Ecuador. That is a very specific job. <laughs> um, I don't know of any titles uh, that have naval vocabulary. Ricardo, do you know of any? Oof, no, but that's a very good question. <laughs> but well, we've got we some homework, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got some homework and maybe we, we can uh, find out if, if there's something as specific. Okay. Uh, Peter, do you? Um, yes, we do have one product. It's not um, online, um, but it's called Safe Sailing. Ah. It's a CD-ROM based wow. product um, wow. designed to be used uh, on ships, really. Um, and so they cut a lot of costs in terms of trading on ships. Um, and that's available as a CD-ROM. It practices maritime English and focuses particularly on the SMCP, which are the Standard Marine Communication Services. So a lot of the um, standard language that ship staff have to know um, and helps in sort of um, routine and non-routine situations. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Peter. I'm just um, finding the link for that, which I'll post in a moment into the chat box. Um, if we don't have any more questions, I think we'll, we'll end there. Thanks very much, um, Ricardo and Deirdre, for a fascinating presentation there. Thanks, thank Peter, you. for answering a few questions for us as well. And thank you very much to everybody for attending. Um, don't forget that um, if you'd like a certificate of attendance, please email Kerry Start, and that's kstart at cambridge.org. And the recording of today's session will be live on our catch-up page, um, which you can see on our main site um, from Monday. And don't forget that next week we'll be back with um, Karen Elliott, talking about tips and tricks to prepare your learners for the Cambridge English Young Learners Tests with ideas and activities to build students' confidence and thinking skills in preparation for the Cambridge English Starters, Movers and Flyers Test. So thank you very much. We'll be back here in two weeks, and I hope we'll see as many of you as possible then. Thanks very much. Bye. <laughs>